kick it off, Yaron. You know, when we started talking about purpose, it, it reminded me of a story when I was a young, very young CEO. Uh, my first week as a CEO, I was overwhelmed and I started working like crazy 14 hour days. And uh, in the end of the first week, the CEO, uh, sorry, the owner of the company uh, invited me to his room and said, what are, you, what are you doing every day? 14 hours, I see the lights on at 10 p.m. What's going on? I said, like, I'm working. I'm working as hard as I can. I'm a CEO now. And he said, what are you trying to achieve? And I said, that's a really good question. And then he gave me a, a, an analogy that I'll never forget. He said, you know, we're all dancing in the dance floor, but from time to time, you have to go up to the balcony and look at what's going on and look far and know what you're, you know. And, and for me, that stuck uh as as always have a vision a purpose to what you're doing so let's kick it off by what is for you what is the meaning of purpose what is it so purpose is the why you know why am i doing this uh you know why am i giving this talk right now i, I could be at the beach no wait we're in lockdowns so i couldn't be at the beach but i could be doing you know, a dozen, two dozen, a million other things. Why am I doing this? What is the goal? Do I have a goal? Am I trying to achieve something? If so, it, is it a legitimate goal? How does it relate to all my other goals? So it really is this, the pursuit of a goal intentionally. Purpose is about, you know, being intentional it's about knowing what you're doing, knowing why you are doing it. And it, it's a recognition of the fact that I can actually choose. <laughs> I can be here or I can be at the beach. I, I can be somewhere else. I, you know, I can choose how to set my life. I can choose what values to pursue. I can choose how to live. I am actually in control. And... That means I've got a whole selection of values. I'm not set to go in one path. I can change paths. I can pursue lots of different things. So, you know, purpose is really that goal directedness. It's the idea that you are goal directed in every aspect of your life, in every aspect of your existence. It's that is open to choice where, where, you, where, where, you, can, where you can choose. It's about being a valuer. It's about pursuing values in an intentional way, in a thoughtful way, in a purposeful way. Okay, uh, I'm being told that something's wrong with the video. Is everything good? Uh, Video's not great, so you're, you're kind of jagged. It, it looks like low quality bandwidth on your end. Okay, well, we'll try anyway. So I wanted to continue. It seems like before we dive into it in more kind of detail, but it seems like there's a need, a human need so is it psychological? What is it about the need of having a purpose? Because sometimes, you know, when you lose purpose, it seems like everything's going down, right? So what is that need that, that, that humans have to have purpose? Where is that coming from? Well, at the most foundational level, at the most basic level, it's the fact that we don't know instinctually, automatically how to live that we have to choose our values. And because of that, if you, if you think about the fact that we have so many values, there's so many things you could be doing, there's so many things you could be choosing, um, you have to consciously decide what's important and what's not. What's going to lead you towards your goals and what is not? What goals are worthy of having? From the most abstract to the most concrete, there's no automatic mechanism to make that happen. You have to actively pursue it. You have to actively engage. You have to actually actively think. And, it, to, to, but the, and this is all the way at the level of survival, right? At, at the very basic of just as a human being to survive. We have no automatic knowledge of how to survive. So you have to, in every, in every activity in life, from, from the basic activity of, of, of getting food <laughs> and, um, uh, you have to pursue certain goals. You have to pursue a certain path and you have to figure out what those goals are and figure out what that path has to be, needs to be. And 
that is at the very core of why we need purpose because we don't we don't know how to live we have to figure it out we have to make the right kind of choices we have to use our reason and 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 allow our reason to 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 solve the you know to help us solve the problems of survival and then as you go up from survival as you go up to living life as a human being with all the spiritual and material needs that human beings actually have well it gets more and more complex it gets more and more challenging but all of that is part of living and all of that requires us to have, to be very goal oriented to be very focused to be very rational to be very systematic about the values that we choose and if we're not then we flounder if we not then we choose values that are anti life or we or we waste a lot of time or we go in directions that are unproductive and unconstructive to a to a happy life or to a productive life and you know in in I, the the bad thing that happens as a consequence is is unhappiness and lack of focus and and depression and and drift not knowing not knowing what's going on what you know why so wh- why is it you're on why is it so hard why why do we see so so many people confused unhappy in the world around us why why is that so hard to achieve Why, why aren't we, why is it like, an, it's not like a nature to us to, to always pursue something? Why by, I don't know if it's by default, you know, uh, we're not pursuing rational values. Well, but that's the point. There's no default, right? It's so hard because it's not automatic. It's so hard because it requires choices. It requires action. It requires thinking and reason. And it's so hard because at the end it is dependent on our fundamental choices in life. It is dependent on a fundamental philosophy, a fundamental morality. Uh, that is going to guide the purpose or lack of purpose in our life. And if the purpose in our life is anti-life, then you get this constant clash between the values that you're pursuing, And the needs for self-preservation, the needs for living a life as a human being. Mm-hmm. And that clash manifests itself in anxiety, in stress, in unhappiness, and in, 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 in a difficulty in life, in midlife crises, and in, in, all, in all of these kind of phenomenals where, the, where, where self-preservation requires a certain path because reality is what it is and human nature is what it is. And, and, and you are pursuing a completely other path because you're guided by, let's say, altruism. A philosophy that tells you self-preservation doesn't matter, what really matters, or, or, or living doesn't matter, or taking care of your own needs or your own happiness doesn't matter. What really matters is other people. What really matters is sacrifice. What really matters is denying yourself for the sake of others. What really matters is sacrifice. Then even if you choose a purpose, let's say, in your career and you're successful in it, at some point that's going to clash against this other idea of But wait a minute, what am I doing? I should be sacrificing. I should be taking care of others. And, and that conflict is psychological. That conflict is in every dimension of your life. And it causes people to rethink their life, to question everything. But then they still lack, okay, but what do I do now? Unless they're willing to question their morality. Unless they're willing to question their most fundamental, the purpose of morality, the goal of morality. then they are stuck with purposes that clash with their actually human nature, with actual requirements of happiness, with actual requirements of success qua human being. And that would, would creates, you, that say, creates all these disasters. Yeah. Would you, you say that a disaster. midlife crisis, yeah, would you say that a midlife crisis as we know it is related to that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, There's a sense in which when you're young, you're focused on a few things, right? And, and, you know, one of them being career. You know, if you're a better person, if you're a good person, you're focused on career, you maybe want a, want a romantic relationship and you're, and you're driven and, you, and you, you, you're full of energy and you're, you're just experiencing life and you're coming out of the gate and everything looks possible. And you haven't really thought about ethics. Morality is in the background, but it, for most of us, it's altruism in the background. But you're just focused right now because you, you want to you you be successful. You want to do good. And, and 
many people who have midlife crisis are very successful people. Uh, people who have, uh, you know, from their 20s on, you know, single-mindedly focused on this, on this career, and then they've got a family, and they've got two kids, and they've got a dog, and they've got a, they've got a house, and they've got, a, you know, in the old days, a station wagon or whatever. And, and you know, everything looks like it's clicking, right? And then, and then at some point, I think the, 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 the altruism and, and comes into the forefront, and, and it says, well, what are you doing? Uh, on the one hand, isn't the good something else? Isn't the good that you've been taught your entire life something else and you haven't been doing that? But also, you know, why have I devoted myself long term to a family and a wife? Uh, what's the, where am I going with this? What, what's, what purpose does this serve? Why, why, why can't I just go with any young, you know, uh, 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 beautiful woman? Uh, why can't I drive a sport? You know, why can't I do these other things? Why, if, if I'm not going to be moral, because they usually put that aside, right? They put, I'm not really going to be Mother Teresa. Nobody wants that. Then, well, why this? Why Korea? What's the point in Korea, right? Why, why follow that? Why, why uh, family? Why any of these things? And there's no, there's no answer because they've divorced their fundamental abstract moral concepts, which they've never really articulated, never made, really made real from the day-to-day -day life. And that conflict manifests itself in, um, you know, in this midlife crisis. And then, you know, and, and you look at, and it's not just midlife crisis. Look, young people, young people experiencing this as well. There's a, there's a well-documented phenomena and you can see it in, with, with people like Sam Harris and Jordan Peterson and, and religion and Rick Warren who wrote a book about, you know, purpose in life, uh, the, the evangelical preacher. Young people who, who don't know what to make of their life. They don't know what to do with their life. They don't know why they should do anything. They, they don't know what the, what the purpose is. And, and they're drifting and, and they're going nowhere. And they're in the mother's basement and they, you know, they're attracted to crazy ideas or they're just playing video games because they don't know what life is about. And... And then you listen, and, 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 and then what happens is people, these self-help people and, and people who may be a little bit more intellectual than just self-help self people like Sam Harris or Jordan or religion, they come about and say, yeah, there was a, you need a purpose, guys. Let me help you find a purpose. But almost all of them, Sam Harris is a bit of an exception here, but certainly Jordan Peterson and certainly religion and so on, they say, yeah, life, and, and this is Jordan, right? This is what he says. He says, Life is miserable. Life is pain. Life is suffering. And the only way you can deal with it is to find a purpose. And the real purpose, if you really want a meaningful purpose, a purpose that will really animate your life, it has to be outside of you. It has to be focused on others. It has to be on other people. He talks about taking responsibility. First, he says you have to take responsibility for your own life. You know, make your bed, stand up straight, do stuff like that. Take responsibility for your own life. But then... To really achieve, he never talks about happiness because he doesn't think that can be achieved. That just happens. Then you need something external to you. So again, even the self-help gurus, at the end, in the guise of self-help, helping you, they sell altruism. At the end, it's not about how to achieve your values, your life, your happiness. It's about, in, in Jordan Peterson's case, reducing pain. It's about eliminating struggle, and, but, but the only way to do that is by adopting some, in some form, adopting altruism or some kind of altruism. So, so let's go for the positive. Let's, let's, you know, let's talk to an 18-year-old, a 20-year-old. They're ambitious. How would you guide them towards, you know, well, what, what would you answer if they ask you, okay, Iran, what is the purpose of life? What am I trying to achieve here? And then maybe the next question is, how should I go about figuring my purpose? Because I don't know yet. I just graduated. I don't know what I'm interested in. Where should I go? How should I start building my purpose? Yeah, so, so first, the purpose is the purpose of your life. There's no purpose to life other than life. The question is, what is the purpose of my life? And what is the purpose of human life, if you will, as individuals? And the purpose is to live, to live well, to live as Ayn Rand described, um, a, a life as a human being, as, as a life that is fitting for a rational being. 
Um, so you can't, and this is what, this is the problem with, with, with most of the self-help guys. So some of them want to divorce purpose from morality. Mm-hmm. And some of them want to sell purpose in the frame of altruism. Neither one of those can be successful. I mean, you can give somebody purpose that's altruistic, but there'll be a clash and it'll destroy them. And you can try to divorce purpose from morality, but again, that'll clash and that'll destroy them. The beauty of objectivism, the beauty of Ayn Rand's ideas is that purpose is a cardinal value in morality. It is an an essential part of what it means to be moral. It is an essential part of what it means to live. It means to pursue your life. And, And what is the moral purpose of your life? Well, it's happiness. It's to achieve happiness. It's to achieve that state of non-contradictory joy. And, and to counter the Jordan Petersons of the world, it's not this momentary pleasure. It's not just having a party. It's not having fun. It's, it's, it's something much deeper, much more sustainable over, over time. It's a state of being that is a positive state of being, of belonging in this world, of embracing and loving the love, the life that you have. So that is your purpose in life. It's to, it's to live that kind of life, the kind of life suitable for a rational being. And, and to do that, well, you need to do, I think, two things. I mean, you need to do a lot more than that, but, but two things to start off with. First, you have to embrace morality. You have to embrace certain abstract values. You have to understand them, integrate them, and really, really you know, understand how they are geared towards making your life uh, purposeful, making your life uh, uh, valuable and ultimately leading to happiness. Uh, So you start with the most abstract values and then you have to have more concrete values that lead you to those greater abstractions and ways in which to achieve them. You know, and a lot of those values are going to be personal values. So you have to figure out what your personal values are but but is it uh, let me ask you this so it seems like there's a relationship between value and purpose and and isn't like a a spiral would you say that me is beginning my life trying to figure out what my values are and being more purposeful around it is it like a spiral that grows and grows over time would you describe it like that well absolutely as as you achieve your values as you learn more about life, as you understand moral principles better, as your knowledge, both abstract and at the concrete level, expands, you know more, you're better integrated, your choice of values becomes more, uh, you know, more mature, but but, but more informed and more meaningful. Uh, so, So it's a constant spiral. You're constantly learning, you're constantly improving. It's not like, you know, again, other than the abstract, uh, values, the, the universal values. It's not like, y- y- you know, you, you fix values when you're 18 and those are the values for the rest of your life. I mean, thank God that's not true. I mean, the things I liked when I was 18, I, you know, I, I, I completely reject uh, it. it or, or some of them I reject today, right? So you, you, you want to you wanna be able to, to grow and to learn and to integrate your knowledge into your values. And that's, that's what purpose allows you to do. It, it, Purpose is this focus on doing that. It's, a, it's, it's about focusing on your values. It's about focusing on your choices. It's about focusing on your goals. And it's about prioritizing them, choosing between them, creating hierarchies of them. And it's not fixed. Every day requires you to re-engage that purpose because every day there are new value, potential values. There are values you might want to drop. There are things that, uh, there's new information, new knowledge, new ideas that you've encountered that will, you know, make your life richer. So purpose is the standing command, if you will. You know, focus on the values in my life. And it's a huge abstraction because it covers self-esteem. It covers, It's you know, it's one of the three cardinal values in objectivism, reason, purpose, self-esteem. It covers Every human activity, because every human activity, every individual activity is about values. It's about pursuit of, 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 of the things that are important to you that, that you want to act to gain or keep. And it's, so it's, 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 a, it's, it's, a, it's a task. And as the value, it's, it's that 
I am going to be focused on this. This is important to me. This is what I'm going to spend real energy and real thought and real effort to do. I'm going to figure out what's really important. And it's, it's more than just what's really important because you have to be careful here of subjectivity. You know, a lot of times people say, oh, well, think about what's really important to you and what, what you love and then go pursue what you love. That's your values. But one of the important steps there is to make sure what you love is good. And what does good mean? Again, what is the purpose of it? <laughs> it make sure that what you love is life enhancing. It is truly life enhancing. And it is life enhancing relative to the other values you could, you could follow that, or you could pursue that, um, you know, that might be more life enhancing that might, uh, you know, so it's a constant, you're constantly choosing and you're constantly creating hierarchies and you're constantly uh, uh, evaluating and that's what it means to have a life of purpose. It's not you do it once and it's over. I mean, maybe what you do once is define the abstractions, but even then, I learn something about the objectivist ethics every, every day or every time I, I listen to one of our philosophers or, or, or every time I pick up one of Ayn Rand's books or one of Ayn Rand's essays and read, I learn something new. So even there, you're constantly evolving, you're constantly learning, you're constantly growing, and that's going to affect your hierarchy of values. That's going to affect the purposes that you have in your life. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution. Uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.